Hi everyone, so this is a new video about VARTM, so Vacuum Assisted Rent Resin Transfer Molding. I did some videos in the past about this, but this one will be with uh, Techstream. So it's a company located in Sweden, providing some composites, uh, material for Formula One cars and so on. So, um, first of all, I want to say a big thumbs up for packing their carbon fiber that well. So here I'm just showing a bit of the text stream. So there is a side um, with a binder, the other side is clear. You always have to use the clear side on the uh, side of the mold. So here I'm using uh, Easy Composites, the chemical release agent. I have to say I'm really happy about this one. So um, I always use this release agent giving me the best results. So I'll add some um, links in the description where you can find all the materials. So here I was being a bit too optimistic. So this is one square meter of thick stream and I have just wanted to see if I can put it into one piece into the mold, but this was impossible. So I had to cut it down in a few pieces. Uh, as you can see here, it's very easy to cut without fraying and having loose carbon fiber ends. So the next step is just I've cut um, a pattern out of flat shapes just to put into the mold. I'm using some spray just to bind everything well tightly against the mold. Working with Techstream is quite similar like working with pre uh, By heating it you can just mold it a bit better against the mold surface. So here I'm just uh, tightening everything against the mold just to avoid to have some pinholes um, or a bad surface finish at the end. So as the process went um, through I've added a few patches of text stream. I've used uh, one square meter so that's not very much. I just wanted to test uh, the cosmetic look of uh, the finish. So here I'm using peel ply so this is to remove all the vacuum supply coming on top. Um, I've also read on the Techstream website that adding um, peel ply will enable a better vacuum flow through the parts um, providing less pinholes, air bubbles and so on into the Techstream. So I'm adding the peel ply um, with some uh, spray with some uh, with a spray can just to have a nice uh, and tight fit against everything so here is um, the flow mesh uh, it's a green flow mesh I've bought locally here in Belgium I'm quite happy about that flow mesh it gives um, a good resin flow and so on so I'm, I'm quite happy about this one so here I'm laying everything down into the molds um, as you can see there is not a full overlap until the flanges of the mold I'll explain it later on why I did this so here's an extra square of uh, flow mesh just to have a good flow from the center so the resin will be infused from the center through this connector so this is a Teflon connector I'm very happy about this one uh, it releases very well after because uh, resin won't stick to Teflon so I can use this uh, connector every time again so here is a little improvement I did compared to the previous videos so as you can see the spiral tube around the parts is uh, laid on top of the peel ply so the peel ply will create a barrier preventing the resin to uh, go through very fast into the catch pot and so on so here is my infusion line. I see a lot of guys um, adding some pots around or cups around um, the, the infused part, having a hose connected into the part. So here is my little tip or trick. Uh, I'm using this by opening um, the little uh, connector, resin will flow through or can be stopped. So here I'm adding the um, infusion resin from Easy Composite, so it's IN2 um, resin infusion resin. The link will be added as well into the description. So here you can see I'm opening um, little valve uh, resin is uh, going through the part. Uh, it went quite rapidly at the start. Um, then I stopped it for a while 
uh, let it go through the entire part and just open it once again so I've used around 300 grams um, of resin to fully saturate everything and then I've just added a hundred extra just to be sure so here you can see the peel ply is functioning as a barrier so the resin is going a lot slower um, but this is preventing me to have a lot of resin being catched up into the catch pot so everything was infused quite well um, the temperature was around 25 degrees uh, ambient temperature um, the higher that temperature the easier the resin will flow but also the faster it will cure so you have just to find a good mix between temperature and the flow of the resin so as you can see here um, no resin went through into the catch pot so I'm quite happy about that uh, because it's always a mess just to clean up that catch pot and so on so uh, the next thing I always like to do is just remove all the vacuum supply around just to have a nice uh, working surface just to remove all the vacuum supply so while uh, removing all the vacuum supply the part came loose out of the mold so um, big thumbs up to the to the easy composites release agent um, as you can see here uh, the surface is still looking a bit dull but this was because the mold surface wasn't perfect um, I planned to um, polish the part at the end so that wasn't a big problem so here I'm removing the peel ply all the excess resin and then I'm ready to polish uh, the entire part with some polar shine uh, polishing compound so you have a fine grade compound and a higher grade so first you take the rougher grade um, go all around your part take your time for that it will give a nice uh, a nice shine to your part so once that is done you go to the finer course and then you get the results you were looking for so these are some shots of the part finished uh, and polished uh, hope you enjoyed this video if you want to give me some support like my video comment and share if you want to and um, also don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more there are a lot of more projects coming online soon so thanks for watching